Hi, Christy here with a backstory about one of my favorite pieces of mosaic assemblage that I've created, and it's called Aerobarus Garden. I want to show you what's in it and some of the things I was thinking about when I made it. So come on, join me. What do you think about this guy? Um, I am really kind of proud of this piece. This one is an Ouroboros, which is um, a, like a dragon or a snake that swallows its own tail, which is a mythological um, construct that kind of symbolizes world without end, um, new beginnings, um, you know, you're, you're being devoured and recreated at the same time. I, I love that metamorphosis kind of concept. It's a, it's a great metaphor for me. It, it comes up in a lot of, of mythology, obviously, because it's a very powerful idea. And I, of course, it's dragon-esque, and I, I like myself a good dragon from time to time. So this was a nice way to incorporate sort of a dragony motif, as well as this mythological thing. And I thought, you know, um, why not just go full garden on this? So this is actually a tutorial You, if you would like to build your own version of this. If you go to my website, and I'll have the link in the description, uh, christyfriesen.com, you'll see a works uh, uh, tutorials there's a workshop section too, but a tutorial section and you go to the tutorial section and you'll find an Ouroboros bundle, which will give you the how to on doing the polymer clay piece and then a how to on doing this background. But I wanted to go through a couple of these details on here because there's a lot going on here. And one of the things that I love the most about creating in this mosaic assemblage technique is that I have spent decades gathering things, little goodies, little treasures. And as an artist, these are the raw ingredients from which you create your magic. You have to have them. And sometimes we feel a little um, embarrassed or almost like we have to apologize for the fact that we hoard materials. But that's part of being an artist. Um, obviously, you want it to be something that enhances your life and not takes over or holds you back. But the idea of having a lot of things that you can draw from to create... That is super valid, man, and we have to do it. It is part of being an artist. And I am definitely one of those people. I have buckets and buckets and drawers and drawers and so many things because when it comes to making something, I want at my fingertip all of the ingredients to make the very best version of something that I can. And this one really let me use a ton of stuff for my stash. So let me talk about the the, the Ouroboros first, the dragon. Now, he's not actually swallowing his, swallowing his tail, which is a large part of that metaphor. I kind of like the idea that he was just tucked up onto it. So he's thinking about it. He hasn't started the process yet, but he's, all, he's thinking about it. Um, but this is made with polymer clay. Polymer clay is um, an air, uh, not an air drying material, so I can work with it as long as I need to get it just how I want. And then you bring it to the oven to get to a certain temperature for a certain amount of time for it to cure into its final plastic version. Um, and like I said, if you're interested in making your own, you can go and check out that workshop. But one of the nifty things about polymer clay is, well, several of the nifty things are, number one, it's colored, so you can work in colors, which is fantastic. And number two, as long as you're adding and incorporating things that aren't going to melt in the oven, you get to embed into the clay as you create accent accent pieces and things that will accentuate the design. So this, this one is clustered full of that. I've used a little... Um, either a garnet or an onyx bead for his eye. You can see that I have embedded a ton of turquoise and carved shells um, to create this whole gardeny look. Uh, and I started off with different colored clays to create sort of a blend from this teal color all the way down to a lighter green. And then finally, I use powders. Um, I use pan pastel, and I'll have a link in the description as well um, for a wonderful starter set for pan pastel that you can just grab on Amazon Prime uh, that will get you started on using it. Pan pastels are fabulous, and they let me get all this nuance of color. So this little pink here and here, I added that with the pastel. Some of this browns around the eye, that's all added with this pastel. And it's a, a very grabby kind of way to colorize your clay, and I just love it. It's a game changer. All right, so once I made this little dude, um, I baked it and then decided, okay, what's the background going to be? How are we going to work on that? So I actually, for this one, I'm working on a 6x6 six six tile, one that you can just pick up at the at any hardware store. I find those to be really nice to work on because the epoxy clay, and I use epoxy sculpt, 
um, epoxy clay. And I carry that in my site too. And you can get it on Amazon. You can get it directly from the manufacturers. It is a wonderful material for doing these um, sculptural mosaic assemblages because I have the ability to kind of work dimensionally, add things on top of things. It dries rock hard, allows me to incorporate a number of different things. So I made our little dude here and I started off with just a circle of epoxy clay on my tile. I have a couple of tricks that are in the tutorial about how to make sure that the polymer clay sticks onto the epoxy clay. So I, I embedded him first and then got busy on making this background. So I thought, okay, first thing is we want to get like really accentuate this whole circle thing, right? Because the whole Ouroboros thing is circle, world without end, round and round, renew, rebirth, round, 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 round. So I put a little jade disc in here first and then a little ring of um, jade chips and then amber. Um, I love this amber, by the way. Let me tell you about amber for a sec. Let's take a segue, shall we? Um, amber, as you know, is fossilized or preserved or changed, whatever, um, sap from trees from long ago. And this particular amber comes from Lithuania. Isn't it just absolutely gorgeous? I've got a really lovely source there. A lot of amber comes from Lithuania. Uh, don't ask me why. Maybe the whatever happened in the aeons past that preserved all that little drippy sap worked just perfectly over there, but it washes up and there's deposits of it and it's processed and whatever. So um, I, I get my little amber chunklets from, from that source, which I love. And I use the white background to put my amber on so that I can get that inner glow. On some of these, you can really tell that as the light hits it, you get that feel and that glow of the depth and translucency that amber has. You'll also notice that there's like a lot of cracked texture here that looks like it's got like moss or something in it. This comes from using the pan pastel, which I do in between the cracks and stuff to change the colors of my background. It actually gets on the amber as well and grabs into the amber. So if you don't like that, you can scrub it out of there with um, a wet wipe before, before everything dries. But I liked how it turned out. Out. I think that just added to the ancientness of it. So you'll see that I use a lot of amber in here and other places in the background because I could, and I love it. Then the other thing I wanted to do again is accentuate the circleness of it all. So I've just got strands of glass seed beads as well as some of this coral heshi uh, stuff in there as well to kind of make that look. So then once I got that part done, it's like, all right, let's get the rest of this background. So some things are pretty simple. You're just putting in all kinds of little chunks of turquoise or beads or uh, flowers or more discs or whatever, carved jade leaves. That stuff is pretty self-explanatory. But as part of the tutorial, I have a creative neighborhood. So it's like a $10 a month thing where we get together. We have a special Facebook members only group where we do ongoing um, little projects. We have a Sunday live chat and there's uh, various things including new projects and everything that come up with that. So it's great membership. Again, there'll be a link in the description. I highly recommend give it a try for a month or two. I think you'll be hooked and you'll like joining us for learning. But one of the things we did was just this little sort of tiger lily. And it was about the time we were working on this Ouroboros when it came out as the monthly project. Um, I thought, well, I made this guy into a garden. So when we do this background, let's really make a garden out of it. So we did these little polymer clay uh, tiger lily looks with the little leaves and baked those separately using some wire for the stamen. And then it's like, all right, well, I'm going to put that in. Let's get a few turquoise chunks around it, a couple of these glass uh, enameled rings, blah, blah, blah. But you know what else would be fun? And this is a trick I love to do, is to create dimensional mosaic sculptural stuff along with a bit more traditional flat mosaic. Don't you think those look great together? It's like you've got all this stuff that stands up, but then you've got these hints at a more traditional mosaic look. And I just think the contrast, they go so beautifully to complement each other. So what I did here was I used glass beads to create this tiger lily pattern to echo this sculpted tiger lily. And I kind of think that turned out pretty sweet, don't you think? And you can see that when I got around to painting the background, I echoed these tiger lily shapes again in the painting. Um, this is something I like to do a lot, is just take a theme and sort of echo it here. And again, like I had all these flowers here in uh, my Ouroboros back, so let's scatter a few of those in his garden. It makes everything kind of tie together. Um, and then there's just one other, th or a couple of other things I wanted to mention to you. Um, I'm using quite a number of stone discs 
Uh, I have a good collection of these because stones are amazing, aren't they? Um, so many of what I have seem to be some kind of jaspers or agates because they have their own just sort of mixture of colors and stuff. So this is a, a lovely piece of jasper here, and um, they're just really beautiful. So I think they kind of echo again all the circle, 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 circle. Um, I, I picked a bright yellow accent here, and I don't always do something like that, but I thought the gold and, and honey coloredness of some of this amber just needed one more little pop of yellow to really kind of nail it. Uh, and so you'll see I did that. Also, I had some pretty large bits of coral here. And I needed something else to happen over here. So we had this circle going on and it looked pretty good, but it just needed something else. And so I built out another little blob coming out here um, around, and these are bits of smalty um, coming around that particular stone. Uh, oh, and by the way, smalty is glass. It's really cool when uh, traditional mosaics are created, um, especially these are, uh, I don't know if these are Venetian or not, but you know, in, in Italy, they are masters at this and there's a bit more coming around in here. They make this pizza out of glass. So it's a certain thickness, sort of certain shape. And then they, once it's cooled down, they break it in a certain way to start getting these sort of uniform chunks of glass so that you can have the side showing that's got um, the fracture because that's a very interesting look. So you don't want the shiny side, you want that fracture side because it almost feels like stone. It's wonderful. Anyway, so I, I have an assortment, and again, this is one of the products I carry on my site. Um, I have an assortment of the Smalty that I just use whenever I need some kind of fun, very uh, stone-like and yet traditional um, nod towards the mosaic. And I, you can see I've echoed my, my Smalties here and there and around. And I think they, that turns out really nice. It's a good look. And then uh, finally, um, going back to that coral, I just kind of let that sort of stick out and pull that color. And so you see these pops of that corally orange kind of all the way around, kind of uh, contrasting. Because orange and green are complementary colors. They um, are, or at least this blue-green, uh, they look really good together. Uh, it, it turns out to be a very nice combination. And this happens to be just one of my all-time favorite combos is this sort of teal to green look with this very orange to coral offset. I mean, I just think they look great together. And one last thing of note of stuff that's going on in here, because I thought it was kind of a fun little trick, is I've got a couple of these little enamel rings I get from um, a pal of mine who does enamel, Sea uh, Coop, um, Sarah. Uh, and she, I always buy these little rings from her because I love it. But um, I then put little tube beads or bugle beads just straight in to make these little things that stick up. So visually they are subtle, but when you look at the whole thing and you're, you're in person looking at it, they kind of pop up in an unexpected way and add another little um, uh, textural dimension that I think is kind of fun. So anyway, this is one of my very favorite pieces. It's, it's finished uh, and mounted on this wooden board with a hanger. I usually sign it and put my uh, the name on there. You can see the screws, which are part of the process of making sure everything sticks together nicely. Um, but this is just like an overall finished piece ready to hang. Uh, and I, I'm just really happy with how it turned out and just wanted to share some of the little funness with you. Pretty cool, right? That's all for now. Bye.